Greetings gaming historians and welcome to Lord of Lore, where we break down the lore and history of our favorite video games and fantasies. And today, after a long hiatus, we're returning to the world of Amalur to shed light on the history of one of the most prominent races in Amalur, the Almain. While we've done some history on the general races both before and after the game, this video will explore new content given to me by my anonymous supporter on the Almain as it was intended for one of the early Copernicus projects, Project Evergreen. Now of course, this content is subject to change in any future games or content, but thanks to other lore sites and even the Fatesworn expansion, it seems all Amalur content will be founded on these foundations, and that includes the leading force of the Concordance Alliance, the Brave Almain. Also, stay tuned to the end of the video to get a teaser of my next video, which contains new in-game footage of Project Copernicus. Without further ado, let's discuss. As most of us know, the Almain were one of the many human tribes scattered about Amalur after the Age of Ruin. Following the Arathi Empire's collapse, the human Matharans began to steadily lose land and influence, leaving most of humanity become savage and warlike, fighting to survive. Following the scourge of the Durek and the abusive Corthian Empire, one tribe settled into a shoreland in western Amalur. However, an army of Knolls sought to push these settlers back, but a hero rose from these settlers known as Balforth Almir, a tactical genius and devout follower of Matharu, God of Order. Gathering the surrounding villages into the first human alliance seen in years, he successfully pushed back the Knolls and founded Port Miria, the pinnacle of their trade and brotherhood. Though reluctant, he eventually gave in to popular demand and became their king establishing the Almain Kingdom, the first major human kingdom since the Corthian Empire. As the kingdoms around them continued to grow and develop, the Almain Kingdoms began to spread their influence to other lands as well, establishing the western duchy of Falconmead and even helping what remained of the Matharan descendants in the north to establish a lucrative land, turning what was once the minor city-state of Mithros into a successful and lucrative region known as Crownhold. Following the Age of Arcana, in which reckoning takes place and magic becomes available to more than just the elves, many Almain achieve magical powers. But because of the Almain's tradition and disdain for the supernatural, many of these magical Almain are forced to make pilgrimages to the Feylands to escape persecution. However, toward the latter years of the Age of Arcana, the Almain regions north of the Almir Valley began to grow in power and influence. Learning magic and trading knowledge with the nearby Losafar mages of Talandre, the northern crownhold city of Nordenholt became one of the wealthiest and most elite cities in Amalur. Soon, the powerful houses of Crownhold resented the taxes given to Port Miria, capital of the Almir Valley in the south, and they sought to live more independently. As tensions grew, Almain King Cordic II sailed to meet with the governor of Nordenholt, but a freak sea storm destroyed his ship, and neither he nor any of his family were found alive. With no successor, the noble houses of the Almain met to elect a new king, where the southern houses, who had stronger bloodlines and the power of tradition, clashed with the northern houses, who were wealthier and more diplomatic. Eventually, feeling insulted, the most powerful Nordenholt family abruptly left the meeting, with most of the Crownhold families following them. In their absence, Port Miria elected Conrad I as their king, but the northern families crowned Jarius III as their king, who immediately declared Crownhold as a sovereign state. While King Conrad refused to recognize the North's independence and he had the stronger army, he was hesitant to fight the wealthier North, so first he tried to use diplomacy, but this failed time and time again. Just as civil war seemed inevitable, the world of Amalur entered the Age of Ruin, when countless crises spread over the land. As the Heliac destroyed Rathir and the Tirgash destroyed Edessa, an army of Jotun from Fortinmar marched to the Almain Kingdom. King Conrad II and Jarius V made a temporary truce to fight the Jotun, but it was too little too late, and both kings were quickly slain. Without leadership, the Almain were quickly conquered by the Jotun. While the giants allowed them to remain in their cities and conduct trade, the Jotun were free to take whatever they wanted, whenever they wanted, frequently pillaging Almain settlements for goods and slaves to take back to Fortinmar. Hope seemed lost for the Almain, but there were some families in Nordenholt who took advantage of the chaos, using their wealth and influence to make deals with the Jotun, purchasing power with bribes and selling enemies to the Jotun slave traders, and no family was more powerful and corrupt than the Mordwists. Years later, it is revealed that Cordric's daughter survived, and her son Vandric rose to hold back the giants for a time, 
But his ten-year kingship was ended early by Mordwist assassins who sought to reclaim the throne of Crownhold and let the Jotun destroy southern Almir. Though hope seemed lost to the Almain, numerous powers continued to rise that would determine the fate of Almir. Though Vandrick's heir was unable to hold back their Jotun rulers, two children existed that were direct descendants of Balforth Almir. The first was Erdrin Delfric, who was forced to flee from Port Miria when it was attacked by Jotun and was adopted by Artwald Delfric, taking the disguise of Delfric's nephew. Though intelligent and skilled, his past continued to haunt him and prevented him from claiming the throne. In contrast, his sister, Hope Almir, was born in the caves of Winstad, ignorant of her lineage and protected by a secret guard. Though she was intelligent, ambitious, and fiery-tempered, her lack of experience made her abilities questionable. Complicating the futures of the two inexperienced heirs was the power-hungry Sargoth Cadmir, a cunning mage who controlled the courts of the Almain nobility. Secretly a descendant of the savage Durek, Cadmir cared nothing for the fate of the two kingdoms, instead bent on achieving as much power as he could. What involvement the two heirs, the evil mage, or any of their descendants have in the latter years of the Age of Ruin is unknown, but thankfully, the Almain did not remain oppressed by the Jotun forever. After the Colossi expelled the Niskaru Lord Brekthamor from their lands, they marched their empire across Amalur, freeing the world from chaos and attracting many kingdoms to their cause, including the Knights of the Almain. After the Age of Ruin was over and the Colossi took control during the Age of Enlightenment, the Almain were instrumental in developing the laws and codes that united the Alliance, an alliance known as the Concordance. When the Colossi were betrayed by the Dalkofar and nearly slaughtered by the Jotun, it was the Almain who led the Concordance allies to the Colossi's rescue. With the Colossi Empire fractured, more and more power and responsibility fell onto the shoulders of the Almain, who continued to grow in might, influence, and culture. When war between the Concordance and the new Amaranthine alliance became inevitable, it was obvious that the Almain would be the ones responsible for leading their allies to war. And that about does it for today's video. The Almain have always been one of my favorite races, and they have one of the richest histories in the game and world of Amalur. But what do you think? Do you think Erdrin or Hope Almir helped lead the Almain to join the Concordance? Were the North and South united during the Age of Enlightenment, or do you think tensions still exist between them? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below, and remember to drop a like and subscribe so my channel can grow. Remember to tune in next time to see a promotional video that contains in-game footage of Project Copernicus. Stay tuned, God bless.